Hi, how's it going? So today I'm going to show you how to install um, Asterisk with uh, FreePBX. Um, you can download that ISO from FreePBX.org or actually Asterisk.org. Click on Downloads and you're going to be going for the uh, Asterisk Now software. PBX, you can download it either 32-bit or 64-bit. I'm going to install it on a virtual machine today using the VMware, VMware player, um, and I'm going to install a 64-bit version. I've already downloaded it, um, so we're just going to get started. So on this machine, I'm going to use about a $10 gigabyte hard drive. Um, so you're going to click Create a uh, New Virtual Machine. Um, I will install the operating system later because VMware will try to install a default profile with usernames and uh, that's not really what you want to do because the, the image that's already that you've downloaded and now that you're installing automatically creates the root user. So just click on I will install the operating system later. If you're on a physical machine you just insert the disk after you've burned it. So you click next, Linux, and you select your edition. Next, I'm going to name it FreePBX. Let's just keep all this the same, do lowercase. Like I said, I'm going to do mine, 10 gigabytes. I'm going to store it all as one single file. If you are moving it from computer to computer, it's easier, as it says here, to do it split, but it does degrade the performance, so just for purposes today, I'm going to just do it as a single file because I'm going to delete it as soon as I'm done. Um, I already have it installed on a separate dedicated machine. So next, customize hardware. Um, I want to give it, I have a six core, or excuse me, I have a eight, I think four cores, so I'm going to get it, give it, no, I have a six cores, so I'm going to give it two out of my six. Um, don't worry about any of that. We'll do that later. Just select, uh, I'll select my so once we start it up. And it's really important when you're installing on a virtual that you want to do uh, bridged and you want to replicate a physical network connection state so that way it gets its own IP address and all senses and purposes it thinks is it, it thinks it's its own host on the network. You don't want to do NAT because it's behind the NAT on your computer that you're installing it on. Um, so I believe that's it. Memory. Um, I'm, I have 6 gigs of RAM so I'm going to go ahead and give it 2 gigabytes of memory. Go ahead and close and finish. Now you have everything set up like it needs to be so you can go ahead and play the virtual machine. It's going to say that it's unable to process the CD-ROM um, so what you're going to do is click on settings again use ISO image you browse to wherever you uh, downloaded it at click on the ISO and click OK. And what you're going to do is you're going to come up to file or virtual machine and you are going to click on power and reset. So now you can see it sees the image. So you want to select option 1 to install with Asterisk 1.8 and FreePBX. going to go through standard type thing that it does with uh, any other Linux machine. Pretty much you just wait now at this point. So today I'm just going to basically show you um, a bare bone server. The, the very bare um, functions and, and purposes that you need to set up a PBX within your home. Um, you can run this as a virtual machine as long as it's always running. That's no problem. I've run into uh, issues in the past where um, the calls aren't very clear and you get a lot of uh, jitter and lag um, when you try to make a call. Um, so I solve this by putting on its own dedicated machine. Um, virtual machines, especially on Windows, don't use um, the resources very adequately. Um, so would you like to show this one?
So you're going to go ahead and click yes. It's not talking about your main computer. It's just talking about the virtual. It, 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 VMware Player sets aside 10 gigabytes, and so the machine actually thinks that it's running on a machine with 2 gigs of RAM, 2 processors running at whatever speed your normal processors run at. Mine's at 2.6, I believe. Um, so you're going to go ahead and click yes. You can just click next. You know, if you don't need to encrypt it, if you want to, you can, but you don't need to. Use space on selected drive and create default layout. Um, that's the selected drive. Um, you could go in advanced and you could uh, change some of the settings around, but we don't need to do that right now. Go ahead and click next. That's my time zone, so I'm going to just uh, go ahead and click next. Type in your root password. very important to remember this password. Click Next. And it's just going to sit here and install. When this is installing, it's installing CentOS 5, it's installing FreePBX, and it's installing Asterisk. That way there's no compiling, you don't have to put anything together, and it should work straight out of the box with a few minor alterations. You'll have to add in your VoIP uh, provider. Um, I use Callcentric. They work very well with this, uh, with this system. Um, Callcentric is uh, it's about, uh, I think it's one and a half cents um, per minute, which isn't bad. And I, I pay just per minute. Um, I think there's like a $1.99 uh, maintenance fee, so it, it comes out to be about $4 a month once you add in all the taxes and everything, um, and then I pay per minute. I usually use less than 500 minutes a month, so my bill comes out to about $20 a month. Um, that might be wrong, that was just a rough estimate. One of the reasons why I like free PBX so much is because it's it's takes away the need to know Linux commands completely necessary. You still need to know a little bit of know your way around Linux a little bit, but you don't need to know everything. You don't have to completely understand the operating system. You can install it using this GUI that you see right here, and then you can configure free PBX and administer it and virtually hardly ever need to actually go in and and know Linux commands with the exception of if you want to provision your phones which I'm not going to go into here but if you want to provision IP phones to automatically um, you know take the configure configuration files and whatnot you do have to know how to go in and install a couple of packages it's really not that that hard um, nothing that you can't Google and find out I'm going to pop this out of the window right now. Okay, I'll see you in part two.